So are you resilient or durable on a ride? Do you find at the end of a, an hour ride or a two hour ride, you're feeling really tired? Or do you find at the end of a ride, a climb you can normally go up pretty quickly, you're crawling up? Or if you're doing a longer ride, do you find that at the end of your three, four hour ride, you crawl home? So what is durability or resilience on a bike? I'm David and this is Forest Velo. So if you've ever watched pro cycling and you watch people like Mark Cavendish or Pogaccia or Vinegar finishing a ride, they've ridden 150 kilometers and they can still, in the last 100 meters, if you're Mark Cavendish, or in the last epic climb in the mountains, you can still produce your near maximum power, even though you've already done three or four or five hours of riding. That's, that's true resilience and durability. And it takes years to build up. So over the video, we're going to see how we can become more resilient and durable on a ride. So what makes us resilient or durable on a bike? Well, basically, it's your aerobic fitness. The fitter you are aerobically, the better you can use oxygen and the better you can survive for longer and longer periods and still maintain that top end power at the end of a ride. So, how do we do that? Well, really it all comes down to zone two riding, that low base riding. And when you do that, you build up your mitochondria, you build up capillaries, you build up that stamina and that oxygen using capabilities. So I'll link to a video down below have a look at that first about zone two riding because that really is the key to building up aerobic endurance and you can see for yourself how fit you are if you go out for an hour's easy ride and over that ride your heart rate stays pretty much the same beginning to end you're probably at that power quite aerobically fit if on the other hand after an hour or two, you find your heart rate gradually creeping up and by the end of the ride, you're still doing the same power or speed, but your heart rate's that much higher. It shows there's a discrepancy between your power and your aerobic capabilities. And you need to build that up, whether it's for a two, three, four, five, six hour ride, so that by the end of the ride, when you're riding at that sort of easier pace, zone two, where you can still talk like I am, if you can still maintain the same sort of heart rate, you're aerobically pretty fit for that sort of power you've been producing. And the more you work at that, the more you develop it, your heart rate's not gonna go up particularly. It's gonna, if anything, go down but the power you produce and can produce for a longer period will go up. So the key really is to build your aerobic base up so that you can keep your big power for the end of a ride and you can not drop off a cliff edge, as it were, how you're feeling at the end of one of those longer rides. So if you've got a target to aim for, you're going to do a sport here for a long ride and you know it's going to take four or five hours and you don't want to be dying at the end of it and you want to be able to finish strongly or you know there's a big climb at the end of it, you need to build up that aerobic capability 
for that length of time. So basically it does mean that every week or two, if you can, you need to do a longer ride, gradually stretching out your capabilities so that you can ride for three, four, five hours. And like I said before, your heart rate isn't really going up that much over that period. You can still produce a similar power when you're riding aerobically and riding more easily like this. You can then produce better power at the end because you haven't sort of blown up on the way. So each week really you need to try to be stretching out or every week or two stretching out the distance you're riding or the hours so maybe at the moment you're doing an hour or two could you go for two and a half the next week or maybe three in a couple of weeks time and keep doing that and as I said you'll see that you can gradually maintain what's sort of easy for a longer period and the more you do it the faster you'll be able to ride at that sort of zone as well. So if you do a lot of zone two riding and you are doing three or four hour rides, you should find that by doing that, you will actually be riding generally at a slightly faster pace. And it's no more taxing on your body than it was previously when you were going slower for less distance or less time. So if you're enjoying this video, finding it useful, don't forget to click the like button down below and subscribe to the channel to help it grow. And thanks to all those people who've already subscribed. It's great to uh, know that the videos you're making are actually useful and people are enjoying them. Another really important thing for resilience and durability is to make your body durable. In other words, you need to be like strong everywhere, strong core, strong muscles, strong ligaments and tendons. The stronger your core is, the more you can hold a useful position on the bike, the more you can put down power. If you find over a longer ride, you're gradually slumping down and your back's aching. You know, maybe you need to work on that side of things too, to give you that stronger base to work on. Another thing to think about, of course, is nutrition. The longer the rides you're doing, the more you need to think about what you're eating on the bike. And I've got a video about that on the channel too. I'll link to that too down below so you can see what sort of things you should be eating maybe if you're doing longer rides. There's no way you're going to finish strong if you've completely run out of fuel. And lastly, it's mental resilience. People who can do huge rides are incredibly impressive in their mental resilience and the way they can keep going, especially people who do multi-day, big events, bike packing, things like that. It's an incredible resilience to have in your mind. And you certainly need that to be able to ride strong at the end of a long ride. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. Be interesting to know what you do to help you ride those longer distances and how you found them or what you've done to achieve that. Drop those in the comments below. And until next time, I'll see you soon.